this Grace Travel Vlog, we discover the city of Eowanena, the best of Greece that you have never heard of. We'll share how to get to Eowanena from the island of Corfu and what to do in Eowanena, including trying some of the delicious local Greek food. Hi, I'm Jay. And I'm John. And we're Bucket List Travellers. And we're coming to you from Eowanena, Greece. We started our trip to Eowanena from Moriatika Beach on the island of Corfu. We caught the local green bus to the left Kemi port at the southern part of the island. We got off our bus around a 10 minute walk from Lekkeni Port and we got our boat tickets just behind us at the ticket store. They cost 7.10 euro each and we're going to catch the ferry at 10.30 so we've probably got about 20 minutes. After seeing so many people on the island of Corfu, I had a bit of anxiety about getting on this ferry. I thought it was going to be really packed and we were going to have to sort of fight the crowds to get there. but. As it turned out, it's basically empty. Now, I think the reason for that is that most people take package deals with private operators. So there've been heaps of people at this port, but they've just been getting on at ferries just all around us. So I think if you take the local routes, then it's not gonna be as busy, and I reckon it's gonna be cheaper for you. Even though there's a little bit more elbow grease required to just book your own legs of the journey, you're rewarded by lower prices and not as many people. As you can see, there are crowded boats all around us and this boat is empty. Just look at this. We left from Lifkemi Port, which is a less busy port on Corfu Island and it's actually closer to the mainland, so our trip should take 50 minutes. We're approaching the mainland now and it is such a beautiful day to be out on the water. The ferry took us to the port city of Igomenitsa. We had a bit of time to kill till our next bus, so we found some delicious chicken hiros and pork sivlaki at Ohiros Stolamani for lunch. And we also couldn't help ourselves with dessert at the Oven in the Port Bakery. We then caught a three hour bus from Igomenitsa to Iomenina. Welcome to our apartment in Iomenina. So let's take you around. So you can see our living room here and just behind me we've got our fully functional kitchen We've got oven, we've got fridge, we've got stovetop, we've got coffee maker, all very handy. This is a really new apartment and it's really well decked out. It's really nice, isn't it, Jay? Yeah. Now, one thing I have noticed with um, apartments in Greece is that Greece has one of the highest smoking rates in the world. So you will notice that every apartment comes equipped with uh, cigarette trays or ashtrays. What we've noticed with this one is that they seem to allow smoking inside so I can smell a little bit of a cigarette smell in the couch but the rest of it seems pretty fine. Let's take you upstairs. Uh, we've got our main bathroom complete with washing machine which is always very handy when you're on the move. Yeah really nice shower and then our bedroom very comfy bed and then there's a balcony out there as well uh, where you can dry all your clothes on a clothes rack and we've even got an additional TV. It was 50 euro per night and that's the most expensive we've paid in Greece but today was a really big travel day so we decided just to splash out a bit more. Yeah yeah splash out a little bit more yeah. And this place also has three balcony areas so that's nice having a bit of outdoor space as well. Yeah, so a really nice apartment, 50 euro, bit on the expensive side, but it is really nice, it's really new, we love it. We're currently in Katsari Park, which is a beautiful lakeside park on the edge of Iwanina. Yeah, it's really pretty, there's a really nice bike track that you can go riding your bike or running along. The backdrop is the Iwanina Castle, which we believe you can walk up we're going to find that out on today. The wall 
walls of Iwana Castle surround the city area and they're really beautiful old ruins. So you can actually see them behind us now and we're walking along them to get some nice views. So the castle itself I don't think exists anymore, it's just the walls. Now we have been told that there's a lookout point or a hill, so that's what we're in search of right now. Wow, so this is really pretty. The ruins from the main city area look really nice, but I'd say this is a really spectacular vantage point. I love all these different archways, and there's a cafe here. I think there's also a Byzantine museum, so let's go and check it out. So this is the entrance to the Blacksmithing Museum, and you can see the admission is four euro. You know how I was saying that there wasn't a castle anymore? Well, I think I was wrong. So we're in the castle grounds now, and yeah, it looks really pretty. So they are castle ruins. However, yeah, they're quite expansive. If you just look around, there's there's a cool looking mosque over there and there's a Byzantine museum just over there so yeah this is really pretty and you get a really nice view overlooking the lake in that direction so we'll check that out in a moment One thing to do in Iowa Nina is to take a boat to the island in the middle of the lake. So it's two euro per person each way and that's pretty good value I reckon so we're going to give it a go. Ioannina Island is set right in the middle of the Pemvatida Lake and it's a really charming island isn't it? Yeah I just love it there's all these beautiful little silverware stores and boutique shops and there's baklava we sampled some earlier it was really nice. Yes I'm trying some homemade baklava. Yes Yum. very good. Yes. Oh, that's so delicious. I love baklava. Yes, and we had to get some for ourselves. Only five euro. Yeah. And there's lots of little restaurants and they serve fish caught straight from this lake here. There's fish, there's eel, trout I think is very popular and crawfish as well. And the lake is just brimming with seafood. So as we've been walking along the lake here, we've seen fish just jumping out of the water. Yeah, we're currently walking along the perimeter of the island so there's a really easy walkway. Uh, it's probably going to be about half an hour but it's yeah it's just really nice. You're overlooking the mountains in the background. Yeah just really charming. Yeah it's just a really scenic area. We highly recommend you come here if you're in Iowanina. Ioannina Island is most well known for its Greek Orthodox monasteries that date back to the late 1200s. The 19th century ruler of the area, Ali Pasha, was also killed at a monastery on this island. And this has since been converted into a small museum that you can visit. On Ioannina Island, there's a lot of food that's caught fresh from the lake and that includes eel, it includes carp and trout, and it also includes frog's legs. So I've never had frog's legs before, but this yeah, kind of looks like a chicken wing, but a bit leggy shaped. So let's, let's get some lemon onto there first. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Mm. Mm. Does it taste like chicken? If you told me it was chicken, I probably wouldn't tell the difference. Yeah, so it's white meat. It's really really light, um, it's not chewy or anything like that. 
yeah, and with the bat off, like if you deep fry anything, I'm going to be happy, I think. So yeah, this was really nice. And this was eight euro. So what do you think, John? Mm, it's really interesting. It's got a fishy like texture to it, but then it, it tastes like chicken. So it's, it's not bad. This is eel caught fresh from Pemvertida Lake and it looks really nice. So yeah, I wasn't sure how it would turn out because eel is kind of an interesting looking creature, but this looks really nice. Uh, it's deep fried and battered and it looks really crispy. So let's try it. Yeah, so first thing is that batter is really nice and crunchy. And then, yeah, the eel, it is a very distinctly fishy taste. It's not bad. The texture is pretty light. <laughs> it looks a bit on the slimy side, but mm, not bad. I think. It's not my favourite. I did prefer the frog's legs better. I think they're probably a bit more accessible if you haven't had eel before. But yeah, it's not bad. So what do you think, John? Interesting. Yeah, I think I prefer the frog's legs too. As Jay was saying, there is a bit of a fishy taste to it. And there's a bit more of a slimier consistency. Yeah, but it's not too bad. Like it's, uh, yeah, it's just like a. Uh, look, I think Jay got it right. It's not too bad. It's certainly edible. There's a lot more to the Iwanina food scene than just frog's legs and eel. We were spoilt for choice with restaurants to choose from. One traditional Greek restaurant worth checking out is Fissa Rufa. This restaurant is particularly popular with locals for their smorgasbord style lunches. We had a delicious Greek feast with saganaki cheese, meatball soup, and a rooster in red wine sauce. What was really interesting about this place is that the manager is actually an Aussie as well. So he won us over with his Aussiness. You may not know this, but there's a really big Greek population in Melbourne, Australia. So it's the fifth largest Greek population outside of Greece in the world. So it's nice to have that Australian connection with Greece. Our Aussie mate also gave us some halva and candied apple tries desserts, which were also very tasty. We found Ewanina had a number of mouth-watering dessert shops to choose from, as well as a whole row of nice dessert cafes next to the lake that you should check out if you have a sweet tooth. We had to sample some of these desserts for ourselves. One of the things you absolutely can't miss when visiting Ayo and Nina is their amazing desserts. There are heaps of shops that have mouth-watering desserts on display. Ayo and Nina is also renowned for its baklava and syrup-based desserts, so we needed to get some baklava. We've got some baklava from the island of Ayo and Nina. It's a bit of a variation on the traditional baklava recipe. So this one's got coconut and chocolate on the outside. So that's going to be really yummy. This one here is a halita borica and it's a pastry with cream on the inside and then just doused in syrup. And then finally, we have a, a local version of the chocolate pie. We just couldn't go past this. This just looks so decadent. So I'm going to try the baklava first. Yeah, so traditional baklava has nuts in there, I think it's walnuts, it's just drizzled in honey and pastry on top, so yeah. Baklava must be one of my all-time favourite desserts, I just love it. It is very sweet, but I've got a massive sweet tooth. And now, this variety is really, really nice with the extra chocolate and the coconut on top. It's like a baklava version of a bounty bar. Oh, it's just so beautiful. Okay, now let's get stuck into the Halak de Boriba. Oh yeah, that's, that's good as well. It's like a custard on the inside, and it's just wrapped in that pastry, then wrapped in a lot of honey or syrup. Oh, so it's very sweet. The custard balances it out a little bit. It's still a really sweet dessert and really delicious. Chocolate with the cherry on top is my kind of dessert. Yeah, uh, this, I'm sure this will be Jay's favourite. Okay. It's just extremely 
dense. It's almost like a pudding. So it's just really... Was really, it gooey? Yeah, it's, it's gooey, very chocolatey, like a dark chocolate. Also very sweet. Oh, yum. I'm going to have a sugar coma straight after this. Oh, yum. So what did you think of Ionina Grease, Jay? I really liked it. We had such a nice couple of days here and the highlight for me was probably going to the island. It was such a pretty area. I loved wandering around all the little boutique shops and just exploring the waterfront area there. It was really nice. Yeah, it was really pretty and I'm so glad we came here. So we only came here just to break up our trip from Corfu to Meteora and we're just so lucky that we did. Uh, it really took us by surprise. It's a really beautiful city. Uh, there's plenty of things to do and the food scene is really, really good. So I think that was the highlight for me. So, so many really cool restaurants to choose from, heaps of desserts to choose from as well. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it, it's got a really cool vibe, this city. I really like it. We highly recommend coming for a couple of days to explore the city, have your fill of all the delicious food here. You will not regret it. Yeah, it's awesome. Highly recommended. So we hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and leave us a comment. If you want to keep up with our bucket list travels around the world, then make sure you subscribe. Now next week we're off to Meteora, so stay tuned for that. We are Bucket List Travellers. See you next time.